Hello there ladies and gentlemen, this is Orphan Last and today I'm going to go ahead and uh, show you how to create a project. Now a project is basically uh, this. I'm going to the browser. Let me close this out. Go into the browser and this is basically where you can go ahead and actually look at what's going on here. So here is, let's see here, project Okay, so this is a separate print project, and inside of this project, this is the default project, by the way. It has folders, drawings, extras, inputs, uh, outputs, palettes, uh, and uh, scenes, um, scripts, all that good stuff, okay? And then I have this other one called channel intro, and then it turned out that I wasn't really making a channel intro at all. I made something way too complex for a channel intro, um, and it's uh, drawing. Uh, as you can see, once I open up this, it's the exact same as the the other uh, the sandbox uh, project. It has uh, folders, drawings, extras, inputs, outputs, palettes, scenes, scripts. Okay, and uh, so we're going to create a new project, and the way you do that is just file. Let's see here. Aha, I found it. So, file, let's see, new project right there. And I'm just going to name the uh, this right here. And basically, you can rename all of those files in there. There's no point in doing that, in my opinion. Just let it flow naturally. Get used to figuring out how the filing system works instead of OpenTunes. Okay? <clears throat> so, uh, once you create a project, all of your scenes uh, wind up being stored inside of there. And so, when you're when you're creating, uh, like, say, let's say you're trying to make some big masterpiece, like a, a 30 minute long movie or a, 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 an hour long movie or something, each scene is going to pretty much be ev each and every single different camera angle uh of the scene it's basically the dailies if you were to be filming a, a movie only that you're going to have a lot less footage you're just going to be using the footage that you're actually going to be using for each scene so we're going to call this i don't know you know what i am going to just uh call it tutorials tutorials that sounds great to me and uh so we press ok and we can actually see well, okay, project root. Okay, that's a different project. Channel intro and then tutorials, and we can see by this red button that we are currently inside of tutorials. So if I were to create a new scene or something like that, it will always, as long as the red button light is right here inside of the browser um, on this specific project, that scene will be inside of tutorials. Okay, so that's how we're going to work this out. And uh, today, the main focus of the uh, of this video is going to be on this. This is called the X sheet. If you don't have it, you just go window. Where is it? X sheet. Right there. And you can even have like two X sheets right next to each other, even though it's completely and totally pointless. Anyway, so um, <clears throat> it's really difficult to talk about the X sheet without also talking about at least to some extent the level strip okay and I don't know how much I'm going to really get into talking about the level strip but uh, there are a number of things that I will be talking about and I don't know why I got that little pop up there because Bandicam is currently recording as you can currently see anyways so uh, let me go ahead and demonstrate something really quick first with Adobe Flash and uh, I'm going to be trying to make these videos as uh, project-based as possible. Having some guy just jump into a tutorial and be like, This is the selection tool. It does this stuff. This is the brush tool. It does this stuff. This is the geometry tool. It does this stuff. This is the text tool. It does this stuff. Like, I, get, I, I get bored in those. And not only that, even if I didn't get bored and was totally paying attention, I still wouldn't know what any of those tools did. So, okay, Adobe Flash is open. As you can see, I have a really old version of it. Um, and uh, I don't know what it's saying. Okay, whatever. So let's pull out the pencil tool, whatever, and let's get the black brush. 
And let's just go ahead and draw some nonsense real quick. Okay. Ah, oh, ta-da! That's a masterpiece. Okay, now let's go ahead and make another layer here. Now, I don't know much about Adobe Flash, to be honest. Um, but I'm just demonstrating something for those of you that happen to know a bit about Flash. And uh, so that people can see a, a little bit of how, like, visually what I'm talking about, I guess. Okay, so I'm dealing with what's called the stacking order of layers. And uh, what's happening here is, as you can see, the further up I go, the more and more, uh, the higher and higher up I'm going. Like, so layer one, which is this black blob that I created, is on the bottom. And if I want to change that, I just lift it up on the stacking order. So, yeah, you can go ahead and change the stacking order any way you want. So, in, instead of Adobe Flash, Adobe Photoshop, Krita, a lot of different uh, image creation sort of uh, programs, on the layers, the, one, the layer that happens to be on the bottom of the layers panel, or whatever it is, is typically the, uh, the objects that will be stacked on the bottom. Everything else is going to wind up being layered on top of it. And uh, so if you think about that, <clears throat> and if you were to grab this timeline and then flip it on its side and visualize this as layer one, this is layer two, this is layer three, this is layer four, so on and so forth. As you move along, at, at like uh, scrolling over into other columns and stuff, once you start creating more, that's exactly how it works. And let me go ahead and just demonstrate that real quick. Let me grab the brush tool and I just draw some stuff okay and then I go ahead over here and let's see here I, oh yeah on here and then let's go ahead and change the color of that to red and then let's go ahead and select this and then draw another one and let's just uh, turn it green like I did on the other one and as you can see the black is on the bottom the red is in the middle and the green is on top. Now to change that stacking order, you just hover your mouse over the left side of the column that you want to have moved until you see it highlighted in yellow and you just click and drag and as you can see I can do this actually kind of sort of indefinitely if I wanted to. I'm, I'm already up into the 70s so let me go ahead and put it right back. Now this brings me to my next point here, okay? Notice how this is like right here, A1, B1, C1. What, what that means is 1 is level 1. This is the level strip, level 1. And a level, to define what a level is, I would say it's a, piece of, a virtual piece of paper with your drawings on it. Okay, so level number 1. So if I were to go here and then draw some other little nonsense, um, basically, we have level number two in file A. So, as what I'm saying here is, um, what what I'm saying here is basically what what we got is it's creating different files. So, if I were to save this scene, A B C, okay, A B C would be getting saved into the into here. But I haven't saved. I haven't created. I haven't created a scene. In fact, I just barely got a, a little pop-up uh, menu saying that it's impossible for the the program to save an, a, a a non-existent scene. And basically, the way you, you set that up is, uh, as I said in my original video, you go into preferences in the general tab, save automatically every five second, uh, every five five minutes. So <clears throat> that's some really basic information for you guys. I'm going to continue talking about the X sheet, and, and um, this is going to be multiple videos I'm going to be releasing this week. So uh, stay tuned, and you're not going to have to wait very long, so st stay tuned. I'm going to be covering a lot of information about the X sheet. There's a lot to cover. So thank you for joining me. Please like, share, and subscribe. Have a great day.